everybody. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> I had, you know, I, I get this thing that I do where I'm like, I get an idea in my head and I have to kind of like work it out. I have to like make it, uh, you know, uh, like build it to like an earworm or whatever. So I saw these, um, I saw these little, these are, um, electrical box inserts. So like if you have a wall socket that has like two, um, two like side by side, um, little, uh, sockets, then there's one of these like on the inside, or this is like what they use to put like some space in between, like if there's tile or whatever, in like the little junction box. So I saw these at Home Depot and then I was like, oh, I need to make some little like spaceship corridors out of those. <laughs> um, so yeah, like my design changed a little bit. This is like my final design kind of, this is my, uh, my like test piece, my, uh, you know, tried out a paint job, tried out some weathering techniques and stuff. Um, but I think that the, like they do, the, like if I if I made some walls to go along with these, or if I just use like implied walls and just you know like this is where the corridor is, and then you're like making your way through there. Um, but I do like the I like the look of it. It has that kind of industrial or like you know spaceship kind of look to it. So um, yeah, like. Uh, these are super, super cheap, really cheap project. I used like some of this electrical, um, this uh, uh, like fire wire kind of cable stuff that I have, you know, like every device that I get, I always get one of those bags that has the cables in it and like I already have some. And so, and then like super, super cheap styrene and uh, a little bit of these bits. I did, I did cut some stuff with the laser, but this, the rest of this stuff, you could just do by hand. Like I did the, um, uh, these are left over from the, the floor tile, the like sci-fi floor tile project. These little um, diamond grade pieces. But, uh, but they're like exactly like big enough to fit inside four by four inches. So they're kind of perfect for my, um, uh, for using with my, uh, with my grid system because everything is inch based. But anyways, yeah, let's uh, let's do some uh, sci-fi kind of uh, corridors. All right, so just kind of messing around with this. Um, I think I like uh, I like having I like the idea of it being maybe like six inches across. And then I like the look of this um, uh, I-beam stuff, or H-column. I guess it's H-column stuff better. Uh, so just for having for these corridor pieces, and then I'm gonna make some of those little boxes too. Um, so I have my like diamond plate stuff, and then I like that for the walkway. And then that's big enough to kind of reach in there and move around. And then I'm going to have like some wires and stuff kind of dangling from the top, I think. Could maybe have more pipes down here, stuff like that too. These are um, 4.8 millimeter though is like a it's a common size of uh, styrene. So I could get like tubes, you know, that would go across here that would fit in there perfectly. So I might just make a trip to Hobby Lobby and grab some more styrene. I need more of this stuff anyways, this uh, 3.2 millimeter rod stuff. So grab a few more supplies then I can get to work. All right, I uh, went to Hobby Lobby and just cleared them out of their uh, rods and rods and tubes of the right size. 
So, let's see. So I think what I want to do is kind of like dangle some wiring. There's like a little gap in here. And then these can be pipes. This is mostly just for structure. It's just gonna add a lot of uh, stability. So, let's see, we can get into these. So, again, these are just some polystyrene tubes, but they're like thick enough around that it it's uh, gonna add a little bit of structure to this thing. It's about the right size, it's a little bit tiny bit small. There's a little bit of wiggle room in there, which is fine. I think I'm just gonna have the tubes on these sides. And then I think I wanna put a little, like, walkway section thing. A piece that I cut. So I'm cutting these like just shy of six inches. Um, because I want to, you know, I want them to have the structure, but I don't want to have to like, have any cleanup on the ends. Just gonna dry fit everything before I start gluing anything. Okay, so if I if I squeeze them in there, I can perfectly fit four little sections of pipe in there. That's a perfect fit. <laughs> so satisfying. Okay, so I'm gonna cut down four lengths of these, and then I think I'm gonna use uh, in in this section. Because it's not going to show, I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use the, uh, the H beams in there. So, and then I want it to be flat because I'm going to have this little section just drop in here. Um, but I'm doing all of this by, by hand. There's no, you know, there's no laser, there's no like vinyl cutting, like if you wanted to do this project, well, ex aside from these, aside from these guys, but uh, if you wanted to do this project, you just do, a, do this all by hand. Um, like, uh, just use one of these like paper cutter guys to cut the styrene down to size for um, the walkway and then these guys you can just you know just use an exacto to kind of chop it in the right place but then so i'm going to drop in a piece a flat piece of styrene in here that's the right size and just have it be just put like two of these i-beams in here just for structure and then to have that flat little thing because I don't think that's even going to show at all. So, actually, I'll just use the square stuff. All right. So I uh, I went through a whole a whole bag of this stuff. Um, Three sixteenths, four point eight millimeter tube stuff to get you know four uh, four six inch pieces on both sides with a few left over, a few little cutoffs. This is a pretty cheap project though, like $3.99 for one bag of these. And then these are like $1.50 each. And then I just I just have a lot of styrene lying around. I like it. Um, so, and then these are exactly half an inch. So 
So I should be able to just cut another piece of styrene down. Cut it down to uh, five inches. And I'm just gonna use the, the paper cutter. I'm not, not gonna bother with the laser or anything at all. down in there, chew everything up. I don't know if it even needs the, the grates, like covering things up. I might use those for something else instead. I kind of just like the exposed pipes look. Six men to glue these guys down. Now I'm going to work from the outside in, get the corner pieces done first. Go ahead and mix up some epoxy. And then I'll just slide these in. Put the epoxy in there. And then kind of put them in place where I want them.
Okay, it's gonna have to be kind of quick about this. It's like five minute epoxy. It, it does have a work time. And then I'm going to use uh, uh, sprue goo inside here. this guy in to get everything trued up and voila Everything here. All right, so this guy's pretty dry, like it's just five minute epoxy, like it takes a little while to fight to fully cure, but it's um, it's like dry. Um, but I was playing around with uh, you know, I was thinking about maybe sticking some like handrail kind of sections going along in the sides, but I think it's the, the walls are sort of just implied or they're just gonna like, I'm gonna make some wall sections that they like, uh, um, that they just butt up against and then like have the, um, you know, the, the wall sections just kind of be like more implied than like I could use these like more like half walls, you know, and then I think that the busier they are, like I was thinking about putting some of these on top. Um, I do kind of like that look. But, um, I don't know if it needs it like for strength like this is um uh, i don't know maybe the high beams See how that looks. Not sure, because I was thinking about doing like um, more uh, like piping kind of stuff. Like I could do more of um, more like acrylic kind of going through there as a light source, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I like how that looks. I think I'm just gonna, 
I think I'm just gonna take this to spray paint for now. Cause I just, I like it how it is. It just has a little bridge section or like a, a spaceship section. Um, I can always come back in and put wires in later. design um, and I uh, I think I do want to stick like some kind of like power line like um, what I have is like used up USB cables and um, you know like uh, I just have all kinds of cables lying around that I was gonna take to be like e-recycled that I'm gonna I'm gonna use for that. And then I think I like these beam things better. These little uh, cross beams. So these are like two millimeters by four millimeters. And that's pretty much a perfect fit in these guys. Um, and then, so like this is, you know, my prototype piece. And I, somehow I got like a little bit wonky with the, I think that when the, when the uh, epoxy was curing on these, it like pulled in this way. So this, the, but I'm gonna do a paint job on this one and then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change my design going forward for the other ones. I still use this one, but. Um, all right, so. So by the time I'm done cleaning my airbrush, like after doing that, just a super thin layer of, uh, of paint on there, then it's dry enough to do um, uh, hairspray chipping. Okay, so what I wanna do now is, um, I'm just going to melt some of that layer of uh, hairspray. Just got some water. So I just want to like kind of chip it off so that it looks like there's like traffic areas where the, um, you know, people have been walking and they've worn the like the paint off of those areas. So I'm gonna leave it in some spots and then take it off in other places for effect, you know? In fact, I'm gonna try something different. 
and use a little toothpick. Okay, so you can see that that has a really realistic looking kind of chipped paint look. Um, and then uh, what I'm gonna do is take this out and then seal this. Like if I wanted rust in there, I would have put rust on the, like in between in that layer, kind of in between the hairspray and the this other layer of paint to get that, but I don't want it to be rusty. I want these to be, hmm. I guess if they are industrial walkways, then they would be rusty, but I want them for spaceship interiors. So I don't think that that would be super rusty because it's not exposed to a lot of water and oxygen necessarily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna take it out and seal it. I'm gonna do a layer of varnish to just seal everything down. And then I'm gonna go over that with, um, I think I wanna do some pigments and an oil wash to dirty it up and then do some weathering. Okay, so I took everything out, sealed it down. Um, so that's, this layer of paint isn't going anywhere. Like that's gonna protect it from being used, like played with and stuff, thrown in a in a bin for storage. So now, what I want to do is I've got. I'm just gonna use. I'm gonna use a makeup brush, and then I'm gonna use some pigments, and I'm just gonna kind of put some some dirt on here, and it sort of behaves more like a. Um, more like a wash like the uh, it doesn't it doesn't act like a dry brush as much because when you when I if I put the oil wash on top of this then it's gonna it's just gonna kind of settle in the cracks you know and it's just gonna make everything look kind of dirty and weathered that's more the look that I'm going for than like rusty. All right, so now uh, I'm gonna take some cheapo oil paints. Just doesn't take a lot, just a little tiny bit. And then I'm gonna water it down just a ton with uh, some uh, odorless mineral spirits. Oops. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Don't wanna use a good brush. These are crapped out, destroyed brush. And I just want to thin this down until it's just like super, super thin. The mineral spirits.
And again, that's just gonna make things look kind of dirty. It's kind of like pooling like uh, mud, like dirt and grime and stuff. This is like my final design. Um, I don't want to mess with it too much. It's still it's still drying. Like I just finished gluing it up. But uh, so in here, like this little part, some of the stuff that fits perfectly in there is like uh, airline tubing. Like if I wanted to make some little kind of like neon plasma light fixtures, plasma tubes, like in this, or, uh, and then just use like a piece of acrylic inside of the, um, airline tubing. Like that's a, that's a perfect fit in there. Um, I, I cut down some pieces of this, uh, five millimeter square tube styrene. And then, um, you know, pop that in there. And then what fits like perfectly in there, if I wanted to droop some little cables, is like, um, like used up uh, headphone wire, you know, or just like whatever kind of wire like that. So I do, I think I do want to do some like droopy wire stuff. Like I have tons of this stuff lying around this, um, what's this like network cable stuff. You know, just there's so many like devices around the house that just I, I have like so much of this stuff. So, anyways, um, I think I am gonna do that later with the the final design. But um, with this guy, this is all you know. The, the oil paint is all like dry. Um, so. I think I do want to do just a little bit of rust kind of stuff in here though. Um, like I like how it looks, but I want some just some high key, high contrast, uh, like bright red rust to just kind of make things like pop out a little bit. So I'm just going to use some like really, really cheapo craft paint, you know, apple barrel, like 50 cents a tube. Uh, and then I've got a, a packing foam insert. And uh, I'm just going to make a brush out of this, out of the packing foam. Just gonna grab it like that. And like I want that little surface to that has some texture. And I'm going to dip it in here just to Put a little bit of paint on there and tamp it off until it looks like that, you know? Uh, and then just put a little bit of uh, like oxidized red rust in, in some places. Um, just like where there's like exposed metal, like along like edges and things like that. You know, not not going overboard, just like just a little bit, because um, you know it's bright red, so it's gonna really stand out. Just kind of tamp off a little bit until 